Dan Larson here, and I'm at the photo booth with a whole bunch of mail. Up first is this issue of Back Issue magazine. That's redundant. Uh, it's from Jeff in Beach Grove, Indiana. This is Back Issues, Back Issue magazine number 39. This is the April of 2010 issue. Uh, it is clear why Jeff thought I might be interested in it. Uh, it's obviously Spider Ham on the cover. I talk about Spider Ham quite a bit. Um, the, uh, more, more important. There's two other things here that are more important than my love for Spider Ham, which is crazy to, to say. But there's a comprehensive uh, <laughs> hogs the spotlight. There's a uh, comprehensive history of Spider Ham in here that talks about the whole uh, who, who created him, how he was created, where the ideas came from. Uh, the publishing history, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, more importantly here, though, uh, is that this issue is it's from 2010, uh, but the cover is by Mike Waringo, and the cover sketch is dated 2007. Uh, that, unfortunately, uh, was the year that Mike Waringo passed away. Uh, I did have the opportunity to meet Mike uh, before he passed away uh, in 1998 or 1999. I don't remember exactly which year it was. Uh, I went to Wizard World in Chicago both of those years, uh, and he was actually in attendance uh, at one of them. I don't remember which one it was, uh, but uh, I was lucky enough to be at a panel that he was at where <laughs> we were playing uh, Win, Loser, Draw. Does that mean anything to anybody? Uh, but basically, he was sketching on a big, giant, you know, sketch pad uh, up in front of the audience and everybody. And I was up there as the contestant trying to guess what he was sketching before the other artist, who I don't remember who it was, and the other contestant were trying to play. So anyway, Mike and I were a team, and we got all the answers right, and I won the contest. And my prize was I got to keep a bunch of, uh, I got to keep all the sketches that he had done. Uh, so anyway, uh, tangent, uh, this is great. Jeff, thank you very much. That's a great... Uh, I, I didn't even know this magazine existed, uh, and that's a great piece to have uh, of Spider-Ham from Mike. Uh, up next, we've got Chris Ecto from New York. Uh, he is at Chris Ecto, C-H-R-I-S-E-C-T-O on Instagram. Uh, Chris Ecto sent in this uh, Boba Fett print, um, kind of a street art style here, very graphic, um, all the all the colors and stuff. Uh, it's no secret to anybody that watches the show with any degree of regularity or irregularity. Uh, Boba Fett comes up. There's two things that come up on the show a lot: this and this. So it's cool that they're both represented here, <laughs> and it's cool that uh, uh, they're both frameable, uh, and I could decorate my space with them. Uh, check out Chris's uh, Instagram, uh, where he's got a lot of other uh, sort of pop influenced uh, art and stuff. Uh, after that, we've got uh, Joel. Joel Carroll uh, from uh, joelcarroll.com. Uh, I've been a fan of Joel's work for a very long time. He does very clean uh, sort of uh, line art, uh, black and white stuff like this. He probably has some colors. Yeah, no, he has color stuff. Uh, but I like the black and white stuff the most. Um, just clean, tight, smooth lines. Uh, contrast here. Look at this. Clean, tight, smooth, rough, color, black and white. It's all over the place. I'm going to have a great art gallery to post. Uh, Joel does a lot of great work uh, as well. Check him out on uh, Instagram, Joel, Joel R. Carroll. Uh, all kinds of toys, comics-related work, uh, but also just stuff like food. He's got a great drawing of a taco on there. Uh, Joel, I hope I'm not underselling you here. Uh, he's on uh, he's on Twitter, and you have to hit up his shop on Tee Public uh, to get some of the most uh, adorable designs you can decorate your torso with. Joel, thank you very much for sending that in. Uh, up next, we've got, hang on. We've got, uh, this is, uh, I lost my spot, Brian, Brian from Arlington, Mass. Uh, actually, I need to adjust you here for a second. All right, slide these out of the way. I don't want anybody to get hurt here. Uh, Brian sent in all these Build-A-Figure par pieces, parts, pieces. Uh, we've got uh, Clayface, Man Swamp, that guy, Annihilus, Doomsday, the Blob, Brood, Ironmonger, Ironmonger, Others, Ultimate Green Goblin, Dormammu, I've got like 18 Dormammu legs now, I've got a lot of these too, uh, Ultimate uh, Green Goblin arms, um, some Thanos legs, that guy's torso, uh, crotch, Titus arm, Annihilus arm, Abomination head, uh, I think it's I think it's the rookie. Uh, I didn't read that storyline, so I don't know exactly what's going on there. Uh, Green Lantern uh, uh, Stell, I think is how it's pronounced. Stell Steel. Uh, that's an arm. Thanos arm. Doomsday leg, and Rhino arm. That's a bunch of parts, bunch of arms and legs. I don't think it completes anything that I have, uh, but it certainly builds on stuff, uh, and that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you very much for sending those in, Brian. 
gonna slide some of this out of the way here because we got more to come. We got uh, Jonathan from Manchester, Connecticut. Uh, Jonathan sent in some very interesting custom action figures. Uh, up first we have Darth Business. Darth Business, uh, I, I don't even, you know what, I don't even know. I'm not even sure what this base figure is. Uh, I'm gonna go with a, maybe a WWE figure? Jeez, I don't even know. DC Comics. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, this is, uh, this is probably Joker. Maybe? Joker from, uh, uh Dark Knight Returns. Uh, and then a Darth Vader head. So we got Darth ba Business. We've got, uh, Faker Prime. Fun stuff there. Uh, and then also Super Skeletor. Which, uh, looks cool. You know, I didn't, uh, these figures, <laughs> this figure for the Doomsday Superman or whatever he's being called, um, these are like five bucks on an end cap at Walmart, and I still can't bring myself to buy them uh, because I just like I like I dig the body with the spikes and stuff, but that head, uh, I don't like the head that's the, the the Doomsday Superman head. So this is actually a good fix for that. <laughs> I, I like this head on here, on this body, uh, way better than the actual uh, Doomsday Superman head. So so that's really cool. Thank you very much for that, uh, Jonathan. Uh, well, those those will have to actually. I think all all three of those can actually go up on the Halloween shelf. I think they work great for Halloween. I have to put them in the background uh, for the next month here of uh, of shows. Uh, after that, uh oh, we need a lot of space for this one. Slide these over here. Slide these guys back here. I'm gonna move Joel's drawing and Chris Ecto's print. So nothing happens to those. Slide this stuff back because we got a lot of we got a we got a lot of stuff coming through here. All right, this is from Josh. Uh, Josh from Boynton Beach, Florida, who was uh, incredibly generous with uh, the stuff that he has sent in here. Um, we've got all kinds. Let's start with the big stuff first here. Uh, in this bag, we've got, of course, I picked the one whose the name I don't know. Uh, these are, uh, I think these are Play Arts Kai figures, I'm assuming. Uh, Metal Gear figures. So we've got this guy whose name I don't know. And then, uh, oops, We've also got Solid Snake here. I don't know if he's still called Solid Snake at this point in the game. Uh, I wasn't uh, playing this one. I played the first Metal Gear Solid. It was awesome. It was revolutionary. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, when the second one came out, I don't know, it just wasn't uh, working as much for me. Did this gun break? I think that might have broken off, but uh, I can fix that with some glue. Uh, but these are cool figures. They're pretty articulated. And I think... I think they're Play Arts Kai. Forgive me for not knowing on this one when it comes to... Imports in particular, I don't always know what I'm looking at. But anyway, those are really cool figures and way more articulated than I would have thought that they would have been at this scale. Uh, their heads are a little tiny. Look pretty cool. This is... Oh no, his goggles don't come off. Still, anyway, those are pretty cool. Also in here, we've got... Jeez, uh, we've got all kinds of stuff. We've got... This gal whose name I don't know. And then, I think this is New 52 Supergirl. And a bunch of Joes. Uh, the Night Force troops are actually here. So we got Spirit. Uh, this is a Dreadnought. Oh, the whole, is the whole Dreadnought set here? So Night Force, Night Force. Uh, we got Slaughter's Marauders here. Regular Roadblock. That's Night Force Barbecue. And then, okay, so we got Dreadnoughts, 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 Xandar, uh, oh, uh, Road Pig, who, in my opinion, Road Pig is one of the best figures from this line, by far. Uh, I loved the vintage figure, but oh man, do I love this uh, 25th anniversary version so much. Just the amount of detail on it, the his weapons, oh, God, I just, I love it so much. Actually, he's missing a weapon or two here. He's, did I dump out his cinder block? Um, awesome. I think I think we're missing Zorana, but that's okay. If you held on to Zorana, I would not blame you. Um, the the crazy thing about this is for all the 
For all the uh, 25th and 30th anniversary G.I. Joes I have, I did not own a single one of these uh, until just now, until opening this box. Uh, also in here we've got, uh, okay, that's another Dreadnought. We've got a Harley Quinn. Uh, this is Destro. And then also, I don't know, this is a Figma. I know because the stand says so. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, Snake. And I don't know what's going on with that face. I don't know if that's uh, from a particular moment in the game cutscene. But uh, we got a stand, a machine gun, and a machine gun effect. Um, I don't know if this is a Figma. I think I've only had one other Figma figure. I think it was uh, One Punch Man is the only other one I have. But uh, that's a nice looking figure. And I'm very interested to uh, mess around with that for a little bit. Pop that back on there. That's cool. Awesome stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, man. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this. This is crazy. Uh, thank you very much to Josh. And now i got to slide all this out of the way here. Because there's still more to come. Up next is Chris from Boston, Mass. Fellow New Englander. We got, uh, look. Uh, so, here's the thing. Chris, Chris acknowledged in the in the letter, in the note that he included with this uh, batch of stuff, that uh, he knows I'm not a big pop collector, and ne not nece he necessarily isn't either. Uh, but he did have a few that he wanted to send in that he thought fit fit my my criteria as far as what I am uh, willing to buy when it comes to to things like pops. I I, I don't have a problem with pops on the surface. Uh, what I don't like is that most of them, this is not a good example, uh, and that's right because he said they would fit. Um, what I don't like about most of them is they have those cold dead shark eyes. Uh, and so if it's a figure where the eyes don't apply, like the uh, queen alien here, the queen xenomorph, um, is the queen called a xenomorph? I don't even know. I'm not, e I'm not even up on the uh, alien uh, terminology here. But any the queen alien here. Uh, no eyes, so you don't get those cold dead shark eyes. Uh, I don't mind the cold dead shark eyes when it comes to things like sharks. So my Sharknado one, I dig it. Voltron, works fine. Batman, okay. Uh, but when you get into like characters that are supposed to have like pupils, to me it just takes all the personality out of them. And those are the ones I don't really care about. So I'll never own one that's like a human character that just has those cold dead charcoal eyes. Uh, Predator, that's a different story. Look, he doesn't even have circle eyes. Uh, and then this one, <laughs> uh, Unmasked Predator in Translucent uh, for stealth mode, for invisible mode. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, these two, I think, is this actually a Funko Pop? Okay, this one's actually a Funko Pop. And that works. Again, you know, no eyes, so it's not a big problem. Uh, this guy, not as big a fan of. Uh, and that's and that's no offense to, uh, to, to Chris. Um, but the... Uh, whatever titans um this i just i'm not as big a fan of the the actual design of the sort of you know the abstraction of the proportions the sort of animated look to it like this this i like a lot better than that uh and this is just a fun fun figure yeah would i like it if uh, you know the arms moved and the legs moved and stuff sure but you know by itself i think this is an adorably horrifying uh figure and will look great on my halloween shelf in the background the next four weeks of videos thanks again to chris from boston for that brady up next from denver colorado sent in the uh, marvel legends apocalypse wave uh, multiple man and then of course the uh, star wars black series uh snoke which uh, uh you know here's here's the thing about snoke and, I, and I'm just talking purely from an action figure standpoint. No, it's multiple man first. Uh, this is now officially my second multiple man, thanks to uh, you, you guys sending uh, figures and stuff into me. Uh, somebody had already sent me in a multiple man figure a couple of weeks ago, so this is actually my second. Uh, I don't think that breaks the rule because I didn't buy this uh, or the first one. Second of all, uh, it's okay to have multiple mans. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give everybody a pass on that one. You wanna you wanna not leave one for the next collector? That's fine. I know you're gonna you gotta do it. It's the nature of the character. You need to have more than one. And who am I to say that you can't actually you know pick up more than one when that's the whole idea of the character? So so have at it with multiple man. That's you all get a waiver for that one. Uh, Snoke, on the other hand, here. Uh, Creepy, weird, uh, you know, Sith, Master, Lord, whatever. Uh, but just as an action figure, like, forget about Last Jedi, forget about Force Awakens, forget about uh, any of that stuff, just as, as far as an action figure goes. Yeah, he's got some personality, and I've seen some amazing, uh, amazingly... 
hilarious uh, photos of this character doing stuff, but my goodness, what I it's just not a uh, very, uh, you know, I like Boba Fett. He's got jetpack and flamethrower and an awesome bird helmet looking thing, and this is just like a wrinkly old zombie old man in a in a gold lame robe. He loves gold. I love gold. And he's got slippers on. That's not. There's nothing. This isn't evil. <laughs> this isn't scary. It's different. That's for sure. It's not what the Emperor looked like. It's not what Darth Vader looked like. Any of those guys. Uh, I don't even know if they would have hung out with him. Uh, you know. Uh, hey, maybe he was around back then, and they were just like, "Yeah, that Snoke guy. We're not down with him." But uh, this is, uh, I'll take it, because I'm going to be able to do, we'll be able to do some fun, funny stuff with this. Uh, Brady uh, specifically said that he had picked it up for the throne and uh, didn't need the figure. Uh, and there's, there's your review of Snoke from Brady. <laughs> Thanks for sending those figures in, Brady. Up next is Sonny from Cincinnati, Ohio. Sonny sent in, first of all, first thing Sonny sent in uh, is actually pretty funny. Uh, Sonny has obviously seen previous booth videos uh, where I may have uh, been dangerous, been a little careless, a little reckless uh, with my box cutting open. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't taking proper safety procedures to make sure that I wasn't going to hurt myself or anybody else. Uh, and Sonny took uh, the initiative to go ahead and send me a couple of box cutters. Uh, that's risking some mail issues there, too. I don't know what the actual regulations are as far as sending uh, tiny little razor blades through the mail are concerned, but uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, the only box I didn't open with the box cutters was the box they came in. Uh, <laughs> Sonny also sent in the build a figure part, uh, excuse me, uh, collect and connect part uh, for uh, Steppenwolf, the torso. I'm not sure if I have any other pieces for that right now. Uh, we've also got this gem. Goodness. How delicious. Uh, Sonny has obviously seen other videos, other booth videos, specifically my, uh, I, I would assume the video where I talk about my trans translucent action figure collection what I did not didn't did not have and this thing is just a beauty man it comes with his translucent power battery if I can put it in his hand without the strap breaking off I failed here we go again so I think I currently have so I have green lantern I have translucent green gla green lantern uh, I have the uh, translucent Alex Ross flash uh, and then uh, also a uh, the newer, I don't remember his name, uh, the newer Blue Beetle, that translucent version as well. And I, I'm on my way, I'm on my way to a full Justice League, a full clear plastic Justice League. And man, what an accomplishment that would be. I don't even know if they've made a Superman, a Batman or a Wonder Woman or anything like that. But this is just a classy, uh, gorgeous piece. Love that thing. Thank you. Sonny. Oh, Sonny also sent in this, uh, just for fun. Uh, the note said it was just for fun. This, uh, skeleton who's, uh, you know, it's funny. I think I actually already have a couple of these, uh, and they're usually sort of hanging from the shelf, uh, when we set up the Halloween stuff. So, uh, one more skeleton to hang from the shelf. And lastly, Dustin from Goose Creek, South Carolina, sent in the translucent Judge Death, which is another amazing translucent figure that I did not have in my collection already. Uh, what I did have was the regular one, uh, regular Judge Death here. Uh, so I absolutely needed to get my hands on this translucent one, and I'm so happy that Dustin took the initiative, that's the word of today, initiative, uh, to, to go ahead and send that one in, just uh, assuming that uh, if, uh, if I didn't have it, I, I was going to love it, and he was right, and it is amazing. Here's my problem with it. Uh, <laughs> I know how uh, fragile... I know how fragile uh, a figure like this with such thin joints and, and limbs and, and brittle plastic can be. Uh, I know on top of that how how brittle translucent plastic can be, especially old translucent plastic. So I am so afraid to, to move any of the joints on this dude uh, for, for the fact that they might the joints might just crumble. I picked up a, uh, a translucent uh, neck necroplasm spawn the green translucent one not too long ago uh, and it was mint in package and i opened it up because that's how i do and that thing just crumbled <laughs> it just as soon as i took it out of the box i moved any of the joints and they just they just turned into dust and i'm afraid i'm just so afraid that if i try to move any of these li oh god i can't do it if i move any of these joints uh, uh, that they're just gonna crumble and i can't do that so i'm just not gonna touch that i'm gonna resist the temptation i'm gonna put it down i'm gonna walk away 
I'm going to say thank you again to Jeff, Chris Ecto, Joel, Brian, Jonathan, Josh, Chris, Brady, Sonny, and Dustin. Thank you for hanging out for a few minutes and listening to me talk about this pile of toys and prints and drawings and stuff. Hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who are. Wave to all our Patreon supporters as their names scroll by. And head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash toygalaxy if you want to join them later. 